please allow myself to introduce myself. <laughs> that was from Austin Powers. That's a great scene. Great movie. The first one, Austin Powers 1, was brilliant. What was wild about it, if you look and watch interviews with him, Mike Myers, to the United States audience, and I guess anywhere outside of England, or people that watch the BBC, that movie was fresh because we don't know any of those shows that he was pulling that from. Because I watched an interview with him and he's just pulling those, those characters. He's doing the character of those characters from old shows from that he grew up on. I guess I think he was in, he's Canadian, but English, England, Canada, you know, certain parts of Canada are basically England. I remember going to um, Victoria, and it was what I imagined England would be. Now, this would have been in the early 1980s, but we went and it had all the castles and the buildings were the same, and the guards with the hat, furry hats on, marching in front. You know, I don't know if it was just all tourism, I was a little kid, but. Felt like England to me. And there were English flags everywhere. So yeah, if you haven't ever seen that movie, which I know a lot of younger people are watching now. Not right now, because it's live, but later in the future, it's not live, but you're watching it. You have to have seen Austin Powers. If not, check it out. Another great one that wasn't anything as big as Austin Powers is a world night, worldwide phenomenon. It's a movie. You know, those movies come along where it takes over the world, like Star Wars. But he has a movie called So I Married an Axe Murderer. Probably from, um, let's see, what would that be? Late 90s? I can look it up, but so I married an axe murderer. And it starts off real kind of eh. But it's purposely done like that because in film, I've talked about this before, how everything is a character. So the lighting is a character, sound is a character, the editing is a character. That's why when you see a good movie, there's so much that's gone into it behind the scenes that your brain is picking up on. Pretty amazing. But the pacing of the film, just like the scenery of a film, or I'll give you an example, the equipment used in the film that the characters have, that's all pacing. That's telling its own story. So in that movie, it purposely starts out here, kind of flat, you know, and it's building, 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 building. I believe it's so, so I married an axe murderer. Anyway, it's funny. And I just saw a great example of how using the tools that someone has. Okay, they're, they're the character in the movie and they have, you know, a gun and they start off with a little gun and, you know, here they've got the little crappy shitty gun. And then they get a little better gun, and then you know it goes up and up. And by the end, they've got a you know Rambo, or they start as a novice karate kid, knows nothing, nothing, nothing. He learns a little, thing. and then boom, goes up, boom. and then now he's a master, right? So that's all pacing. Star Wars, Luke doesn't know anything. He's just a dumb, you know. They purposely that's the character. He's just a whole, whole Luke, whole, and then they burn his aunt and uncle. And then, uh, and then he gets to go to visit Yoda, uh, and then boom, he's a Jedi master, right? So that's a character, the pacing. There's a million online courses you can take to learn about all of it. But a good movie uses all of that. A good story, you know, you don't just put it all out there right in the beginning. No, you got to make, you got to. 
work on it. Little bits. You know, the classic easiest way, the way I was taught that all movies and all stories work is boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy gets girl back. That's for any story, any movie, anything. And you can adapt that whoever you want. But you get the concept. Someone has something, someone finds something that is taken away from them or they lose it and they get it back. And you remember, you see that it's always threes. One, two, three. Okay. So it's beginning, middle, end. Three, act, set. Everything is in threes. That's how humans are. Right? Morning, afternoon, night. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. So storytelling is, you know, that's what it's all about. And if you use that, what we were taught in film school is boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy gets girl back. Well, now you've got these three definite periods of time. So it's, you know, how did he meet the girl? Well, it's all this. And then how does he lose the girl? And then how does he get her back? So there's your three acts set, getting middle end. That's the film class for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. You put donations in the tip shop as you leave. Sticks outdoors. Good morning, sir. What was my line in my play? I was as urchin in Oliver Twist when I was eight. What was it? Books you ordered from the bookseller, sir. That's my line. I got to come on stage with the books. You know, big production. It was a feature production at the big theater. And I don't know how I got into it. I guess I auditioned because I was into all that stuff. And I got to come from backstage. I was dressed as a little urchin. In the, what would that be? 1600s? And I came out and I was little. And I had all the books. And I came around the corner and right, I remember the bright lights. You can't see the audience. It's just it's black. And I came up and I I said, books you order for the bookseller, sir. I gave him to him and he goes, get out of here, you little wench. You know. And then I was in the in the group. There were, you know, a dozen of us little street urchins. And we would steal things and trip people, you know. Well, that's Oliver Twist. You know the movie. And here in the United States, everyone does an English accent. And to us, it's perfect, spot on, right? But anyone from England laughs, just like we in America laugh if someone else does an American accent. But to us, it's perfect. Spot on, right? It's just totally perfect. I'm like John Lennon, but you know, you make up all these voices. It's pretty fun. But the English characters I emulated were James Bond, Sean Connery, the Beatles. You know, you're just sponging on whatever you hear. That's what you know it to be is true. So I actually have a really good one. And because of, I don't know if it's because I speak Spanish, but even Americans will think that I am, somehow I'm, I get Irish a lot. They think I'm Irish. I just have a natural little slur of my words or something. My whole life I've gotten that. Sticks outdoors. Hello. So I'm going to talk about it more, but my iPhone is stolen. I'm going to wait to tell the whole story, right? Remember? Getting middle and so I'll wait a little. But to stick to outdoors, my iPhone was stolen. So I had no way to see the app that we were using to communicate, which I won't name. So I don't know. Only once I got the device back, I was able to see a bunch of messages. And I wasn't there. I didn't have it. I have no idea. That's the story. But here it is. 
back. And that's a good story that I will tell. My mouse died. It's a rechargeable one that I normally don't like, but I've come to love them. Anything to get rid of cables. I fucking hate cables. Humans were not designed to work with cables or chains or ropes. No cables. So can I see new things, new technology, whatever the wireless? No cables. I'm there. I like it. Your accent has a good. Well, thank you kindly, sir. How did they get your phone? That's all part of the story, man. It's a long story that I tried to tell people today because it's been 48 hours since this happened. And I don't give up. If you watch, I made a video about it. So that was a blessing. Now, you never know where in the video I'm talking about how, how bizarre that I'm in this little town to get my phone back. I would have never gone out there if it wasn't for the phone being stolen. I'm trying to retrieve it. And now here I am in this great little place. I got some great footage awesome little place that's not even far away you know, so the phone was taken stolen from here and it ended up 25 miles away and through a series of events i ended up 25 miles away at the guy's house to get my phone because you know with technology all these can be tracked right if they're turned on well if they're turned off same thing because these have internal batteries they can be tracked at all times. So I used find my iPhone and it bing, pinged it. But before I tell the whole story, it was the fact that life is mysterious, right? I ended up there and I got an epic sunset and a rainbow and an old car new footage, new place, new environment. So it's, it's like a blessing. You know, when, when horrible things happen, like you smash your car, you total it. But then it turns out that, I don't know, you find out that it was, had a malfunction from the manufacturer and now they're going to cover it. You get a brand new car or you hear people about, you know, they were going to get on this flight and the flight took off and <laughs> crashed and everyone died. But, you know, their taxi broke down or they overslept. Life is bizarre. You never know. Who else is in here? And the other big thing, before I tell the story, what I was going to talk about is this project that has been created by my friends who I talk about, Mickey, all the time. And he is here at Hampshire Outdoors and Survival on YouTube. He does a live stream every Sunday at 20 hundred hours UTC. And Basically, I say that because it gets, I get so confused. You know, people are all over the world. So if you just remember 20 hundred hours, UTC Sunday, you'll catch it. There's this channel. Hampshire Outdoors and Survival on YouTube. Total blast. So basically, we've been friends now for one year, I believe. I don't know. I think he caught, he was recommended one of my videos. He commented on it. I answered back, and that's how relationships start. Do, 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 do. And then I ended up going over there, and so he has his people, his family, and now that family has become, I've become part of that family. So 
for example, here is sticks outdoors. How do I get rid of this? Um, pull that. Okay. So this is sticks outdoors where I'm talking to in the chat right now. And I know him because of Mickey, right? So sticks outdoors. I'll put his channel up there. He, a few people from Mickey's family, an idea got tossed around, and now that idea is actually coming to fruition, coming to life. And basically, it's a reality TV show that sticks is the produ a producer on, and life's a hobby. It's a producer. Mickey is a producer. And I've been asked to be a contestant on the show. And it's a reality TV show about survival. Survival between three individuals, four maybe, we'll see, five, six, we'll see how big it gets, but individuals all over different parts of the world. So life's a hobby is gonna be in Ireland. Sticks is in England. I'm in the United States. Another guy might be in Africa. Well, uh, but because of this technology, we can all shoot our survival situation. We're given rules. So the rules in episode one are it's an overnighter and you just jumped out of a plane or something. You got nothing. And, you know, it's like, you know how the reality shows work. You get this, this, and this. So you could have one thing of water. You can have a space blanket and a little bit of food. Maybe. And then you film everything, you know, so we're talking alone, survivor, you know, all these things. Um, so it's exciting because what hasn't been done in this genre is the mixing, right? It, because I believe it's going to be life's a hobby. Oh, and who's going to edit everything? And so now with Dropbox or whatever we were going to share these videos, they can all be sent to one command center and then edited together to create the show. And it's just beautiful because there is no travel, right? Because normally on a full production, well, you create the show and it's shot in, alone is shot this year in Alaska or Naked and Afraid is being shot in Peru, or whatever it is, you know, there's a location, and the contestants fly in, it's all done right there. So with the power of basically the internet to upload these files and then cut it all together, we can create a global survival show. And that's it, global survival, the global survivor show. I don't think they've come up with the title yet, So it's just great. It's fun. And I've been asked to be on it. So I'm going to go shoot an episode. I'm going to, I've got all the rules. I know what I need to do to go out there and film it. And it's just going to be all raw. You know, here's, here's my story. And then we'll get to see the story of three other people. So it'll be fun. And I've been thinking about it because I worked in television for 20 plus years in Los Angeles, dozens and dozens of shows, all for the big networks. So when you're on a show, and I have friends currently that work on Alone and Naked and Afraid, right? Producers, cameramen, writers. I think one friend's medical. And when you see, and you've worked on the shows, you see what goes in to making a TV show that's gonna be on Fox or NBC or ABC or Netflix or whatever it is. The crew behind the scenes is 100 people, literally. And everything's unionized. So you've got the lighting union who does the lighting. You've got the grips who do the gripping. You've got the caterers who bring the food. You've got your medical who does the medical. You've got rules and regulations who are basically attorneys 
who are making sure because if there's any money involved in a prize for a show at all times on set you have to have it's usually two and they are from a government basically agency that it's watching to make sure no cheating is involved and that came from a scandal in the 50s quiz show if you watch that movie so when you're on these shows and there's it's, there's a prize involved there's two attorneys from this company at all times watching so any funny business any you know okay the thing the prize that you're looking for is going to be hidden in that conch shell and i'm going to make basically i'm going to make you win this show you're going to win the million dollars and we're going to split it because i'm going to tell you how to win and that's why it's legal in the united states every single show that involves money has these people on it to avoid cheating so then you've got the teamsters who are driving the equipment to the place then you've got security who's providing security because when you've got tens of millions of dollars worth of hd now equipment and you go to a foreign country that has to be guarded at all times even on set because even in la film crews get robbed still to this day a long time ago during i heard it started back in the 60s gangs in los angeles figured out well they also had you know friends and family working on a shoot or whatever and they this is high value big ticket item money stuff they steal the whole semi full of gear film cameras whatever so you have to have security at all times so to, to film one of a, a show takes and that's just people physically human people that are there you know on the day of the shoot you might have say 50 people but then you've got the production company people the people making the money and putting the money up so there's 100 people there and then 500 here and then you've got sony and then you got fox and that's thousands of people to make a show then the filming of the show the way it's done is extremely you know not difficult it's it's just all a factory but these shows when you watch them it's all fiction right non-fiction means that it's all true and blah blah well it's a scripted tv show the minute that you know we're going to shoot this show and use a camera and hit record unless while you're hitting record a nuclear war breaks out right that's all a, a show that's planned right so especially when you watch alone and naked in the trade and you see them oh they're dying, oh, and they've got their little camera thing oh, i'm so cool you know all this they've got a medical crew 20 feet away from them at all times right because of insurance now they tried to get away with that years ago where they really did give people a camera and a battery pack and send them out they got their asses sued plus it's illegal so you got to take it all with a grain of salt do they suffer yes but they suffer while being watched very closely anyway so having worked in the industry i've worked on lots of reality shows and it'll be fun to do this I haven't done a TV show in 20 years, so I'm excited. I've already got my plan, what I'm doing, you know. Oh. Sticks Outdoor says, check your WhatsApp, okay? Well, secret's out. We're using WhatsApp. Let's see. He said he sent me something. <laughs> okay okay hold on is this something that you want me to show to the public let me know in the comments and i'll show it on here right now and here's life's a hobby this is owen i'll put his channel up here now we're just missing mickey he may be busy today i don't know but let's look life's a hobby here I'm learning how to great channel so life's a hobby is a producer of the show sticks is a producer of the show 
I'm sure Outdoors is the producer of the show. Good morning, sir. I have to put the comments up here so I can read them, so I can see big, but I can see you said, I have no glasses to read. Yeah, well, I don't have my glasses. Ooh. Blind as a man. Okay, so I got the word, no. Because obviously you want to keep the suspense about a new show and a new idea. I mean, me talking about it doesn't give it all away because I know that there's more to it. I'm just giving you the basic outline of it's a reality show about survival and I'm here, they're there, and that's it. But the magic is always in what are the rules? And that's where it gets created. Okay. Because I'm here and I've got my environment that I'm in. Well, Owen is in Ireland. He's in his own environment. Mickey is in England. He's in his environment. I'm talking about the weather. So, and what's the scenario? What happened to each person? It's not the same where on the TV show, it's, you know, 20 people or teams or whatever. And here's your scenario. The scenario today is blah, blah, blah. So that's where it gets exciting and can be fun. That's what I'm excited about. The one thing I was thinking about today is show and tell. You know, I always do a show and tell part. Oh, and I got something. I forgot. I do have something. Okay, good, good. Because if you watch the channel, you know that I shop at Goodwill, which is a thrift store. And we call it picking. You know, you're picking. Picking your nose. We're picking items. And then we sell them on eBay. So we buy them real cheap. And we sell them. That's how it works. And each one of these live streams, I incorporated a little segment called show and tell. And I show, because if you watch the channel, you see that I shoot videos of myself at the Goodwill bins picking items. I have to be real careful because you can't have anyone else in the video. You know, that's a violation. So I keep it real tight. You just see the item. People love it. You know, it's fun. And it's a way for me to rescue those items without actually physically taking them. It's like I'm getting them on film because I do lots of vintage military stuff. And, and it's cool because in the United States, we all know the bins and Goodwill and that, whatever. But in the rest of the world, that doesn't exist, right? Like our garage sales to us, it's just it's a garage sale, you know. And, but in other parts of the world, that doesn't even exist totally totally different okay when you live in buildings that are like this big you know like this you know your neighbors like right here well you don't have a garage <laughs> if you've got money you've got a little place to park your car and your car is like this big so their traditions are like ours here we have giant homes giant garages giant cars huge driveways and we have giant garage sales you know here we the whole neighborhood does a garage sale once a summer. And we're, because of our affluence and being a first world country in the United States, we're extremely spoiled and rich. And a lot of people don't know it, but you know, we've got a perfectly good item, but oh, it doesn't work anymore. Put it in the garage sale, get rid of it. Well, other countries are still used to not having. And so the getting rid of stuff and just ah, throw it out, it's a very different thing with my family in Spain and France who've come recently through, you know, if you look at World War II even, well, that mentality of when you have nothing, you know, you don't just, you get something, you keep it going. Does that make sense? And in anywhere that I've traveled and worked in the world, especially, you know, any third world country, that doesn't exist. <laughs> I mean, people kill each other to get stuff. 
you know, you've got a good water system, well, people steal it. You've got a nice, you know, nice cow that's giving milk, they steal it. So this whole thing of the goodwill bins and the excess and the affluence and the money is very interesting to people in other parts of the world. Life's a hobby. I'm in the west of Ireland. It's miserable weather. Right, so that'll make it interesting too, because if the premise of the show is that, you know, what's cool about the show is that it's the same night. Okay, so say that the goal for the show right now, I believe the filming schedule is, say, a month out from right now. And so what's cool to me is that I'm shooting it on boom, you know, this date, the other contestants this date, or same date, and we're all in these different, so no one can control that. So where Owen's at right now, in the west of Ireland, it's miserable weather. Well, when he goes to shoot, it's miserable weather, it's all shitty, and blah. well, think about his survival and what he would have to do in that situation. Well, I'm in Oregon, and we got a warm front, it's 80 degrees, and I'm just kicked back, like, you know, you watch me for 12 hours, just kick back. Nighttime comes, I go, oh, you know, that's what's fun. Black hole retro, shout out from the bins. Black hole retro. Well, maybe I know you from the bins. I don't know because I don't know black hole retro. Let me know who you are. Or give me a description if you don't want to say who you are in real life. Give me, a, give me a hint, but welcome. Thank you for coming. This is a late night stream for us. If you're in the United States, I'm just thinking you're from here. If I know you from the bins and um, oh, what was I going to say? Um, so these are my friends that are in England, Ireland. I've got some friends from Spain that they watch. And yet on the subscriber count, it doesn't show up. I don't know. Spain's always diffident, but so it's that time zone. Cause for them right now, it's morning right now here. It's what time is it? As I'm making this video, it's 1230 AM on Friday night. So for them, it's 9.30 a.m. in the morning, right? Now I'm moving. And again, it's supposed to be Saturdays in the morning. We'll see if I pull it off tomorrow. But... So. I'm just here for a little holiday with the dogs and wife. Okay, so you must be traveling on vacation. In the west of Ireland. Oh, I get it. Okay. Oh, here's my job. The baby's up. I don't know if she was asleep. She hears somebody. No te mojes. She speaks Spanish. She's from Mexico. She's a rescue dog. Okay, so that makes sense now. He's in the west of Ireland. He's on a vacation with his dog and his wife. It's me, you do, Raka. Yeah. Okay, so Black Hole Retro. Okay, I know who you are now. That's cool, man. Well, I appreciate you coming by and checking it out. It's very exciting. Seven three thirty AM GMT. Yeah, so Black Hole Retro. I'm friends with his wife at the bins. She's been out there 
I think as long as I have, and they have a antiques store. So when you're at the bins, that's how you build your shelves, right? So she's there, like me, so I know she's there eight hours a day, seven days a week, and she is picking items to then put, purchase, you know, real cheap, and then take them to the bricks and mortar store that they own and sell them. And so you get to know the regulars is what we call ourselves or the professionals because it's what we do to make money. And some people, this is the full-time livelihood. And if you do it right, you can make good money, right? I have friends who are millionaires because of the bins, Goodwills, Salvation Zombies. They, years ago, 20 years ago, maybe more, started in the Levi's craze. So 25 years ago, probably 30. Because at the time, you could buy Levi's, Levi jeans at the bins, all denim, or all the bins, Goodwill, Salvation, thrift stores. They all shared the practice. So denim was just put into huge piles, and it was $1 a pound. Well, one pair of Levi's weighs one pound. So one pair of Levi's, one pound. And this is 30 years ago, so these are vintage Levi's that are at Goodwill. Well, those Levi's that we had, that we were getting for $1 a pair, were selling in Japan at $500 to $1,000 a pair, literally. Okay. So it was, oh, something's popping up. Someone's here. Look at this. You guys are going to love this because I invited someone. And here we go. First time ever. This is Owen from Life's a Hobby. That's the first time we've, I've tried this, so I don't know how the audio is going to work. Could be really bad internet. Let me turn up the audio. I guess, am I going to have to put on earphones? Let me check. I got to enable them here. Okay. This is Owen from Life's a Hobby. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you too. Yeah, hello from, cool live is that? from the west of Ireland, watching my dog having a poo. How killer is that? Beautiful. Yeah. This is uh, the wild country of Ireland. Good morning. And I'm just awake, but uh, I can't go my Saturday morning without saying hello to my friends. Hang on, I'm going to lose the dog. I'm going to lose Wi Fi or I'm going to lose dog. Come on, Zara. Come on. Say hello. Hello. Hi, Archie. Come on, this way. Come on in. I'm trying to figure out how to make him bigger. Hang on, maybe if I turn my phone sideways. That's so cool, man. So you're on vacation? Yeah, yeah. One, uh, just a few days off um, down the west of Ireland. It's been chaos. The last few weeks has been pretty busy. So I need a break. <laughs> coffee. It's beautiful. Yeah, look at this, the power of technology. So, yeah. Owen, who you're seeing. I built this Wi-Fi network, which is quite interesting. And it's even more interesting, it's working on a stream yard. So that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, you're you're live streaming 4K. I've got a little meter over here so I can see. No way. And you got... Brilliant. Did you get... And, oh, yeah, you're using the free stream yard program, right? And this, yeah, this um, this cottage gets its internet from a pub and i i made the bridge to send the internet from the pub to the house to the to this room so it's, it's quite cool that it's actually working and it's working yeah you know. yeah sticks Happy outdoors Happy i invited you too i sent you the link i sent it to owen mickey and sticks <clears throat> well sticks if you check your email you'll have it and it's a simple I had another friend do it and it took one minute. It's free and you set it up, you click however Owen just did it. But I guarantee you I it's real simple. Chrome. Yeah. I just went through the Chrome browser and it seems to be working just fine. So what's amazing you wanted to test it. I know you love the technology, so I thought should I, I do. click on this and I'm looking at myself going, Do I look okay to do some sort of stream yard, you know? <laughs> no, you look perfect, man. You look great. Yeah, so the first 
one of my ideas that I had, it's been, I'd say five years or something. And it's funny because it's with another friend of ours that is called Bushcraft with STE Outdoors. I'll put oh, yeah. his channel up here. It's so, Steve, is it? yeah, he's in um, England. Where do I have his thing? Damn it. I don't have it. I'll talk. I'll put it up later. So I think I'm subscribed to him. Yeah, we became friends, say, five years ago. And so we're going back and forth. And then I, I said, hey, check out this idea. And it was what we're doing here. Split screen. It'd be pre-filmed, but I'd do an overnighter or I'd build a fire and he'd build a fire. And then I edited the two pieces of footage together, split screen. And we basically, because yeah. I said, you have 10 minutes to build to do this. And I had 10 minutes. And it, yeah. through editing, I could line it all up. And it was split screen. And you got to watch the two creators. Mm -hmm. But it didn't work in a pre-recorded way. It a live stream it would work though because it's real it's genuine and oh i'm doing this now hold on what'd you just do oh you know so that's why yeah. i think it's so beautiful hola oh the doggy's here she wants to go to bed hey i'll turn it over to you <laughs> i just got to open the door i'll be right back one second well, good morning here from ireland and uh, what we're doing here is we're making coffee for my wife and we're using a crystal liter, uh, which means it's not ready now, it'll be ready later. Just take your time with this. It's also called a French press. Yeah, I haven't got silent this is how long it takes. I, and I can't see any I can't see any comments, so I'm else almost back. To, one second comments to me. You can hear birds though, I think. Can you hear the birds? Maybe. How would I do it like hang tough? Oh god, it's the brake thing. How would I do it like hang tough? I'll just take you in there. We'll get a All right, I'm back. I'm back. Sorry about that. Well, well it's okay to too, because you know why? Because it's only us. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Hold on one second. <laughs> There's someone at the door. Hold on. Someone's at the door. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hello there, young chap. Hello. Hello. So, <clears throat> this is Sticks Outdoors, Chris. Who's joining? Because I sent the invite link. Where is he? Where Looks is like he's he? locked up right now. I can hear him talking. Well, the cool thing is, I believe with this. Can you not hear me? I can hear you, but we can't see you. Where is he? Can't see me. Camera. Can you see me now? No, not yet. Oh, look at that coffee. God damn, that looks good. Hmm. Even though I'm about ready to go to bed. <laughs> so you're in the show. It says you're in the show and everyone can see and hear you. So I can see you and I can see myself as well. Okay. Let me check the settings here. Cause... Okay. Edit name and headline. Edit mic settings. Kick out from studio. Ban from studio. <laughs> Put you in time out. Oh, I just saw something else too. That's how I do it. So I can put now sticks is there. You are okay. Hey, you can see me now. I can see you, and now let's Sorry see. About you. Yeah, okay. Go back from the shop. There we go. Back, back and look at moment. that. Now here we are. Run out of milk. Ireland, I'm England, okay. and the United States. So, ladies and gentlemen, so when you watch this, you're going to see. So, this is Life's a Hobby, Owen, Ireland, Chris, Sticks Outdoors, England. So, these are the two producers of the show, minus Mickey, who I guarantee you is doing something today. Um, Here's a coffee, my dear. And I sent invitations to them. 
because I was so excited to see if this would stream and if it would hold up. And you can see that it does. So very cool. And it makes it so much fun. You know, the other thing I was going to tell the two of you is that there's an option on there for you also to stream this at the same time to your audience. So it's a new feature they just added. They had a big blinking thing that now my invitees can also do it to their, you know, stream it on their channel. So, oh. pretty cool. Oh, that, that, that is interesting. Am I still coming in clear? No, no, that's not. Yes, clear. you're totally crystal clear. Life's a hobby is crystal clear. Yes. Sticks out doors. We're hoping at the end of April. It's okay to cook while well, I'm doing it. The end of April. Hopefully, if everything goes well. Yeah. So Black Hole Retro is the husband of a woman that I'm friends with at the Goodwill bins and we pick out there and he is a computer guy. And so he, I gave him my channel and he is um, watching my videos. And I said, sweet, I get watch time. So he's <laughs> playing my videos and I love it. I'm very grateful. Every subscriber that, we get and all the watch time we get adds up so very important yeah yeah live are a good way to so welcome addition to my saturday morning sir good to see you sorry if there's a bit of noise you need something to eat. show you the weather all right so i'm going to try this new thing here i can make chris from life's a hobby the main the main video, so you should be able just to just see him. Um, I want to show you the river. I want to see if I can get the river over here. Oh, wait, I'm very close to the, the camera. How do I change this? Cam. No. No. Mm. There's, a, there's a lovely river over here. I'd love to take you to the river, but maybe it's another day. Yeah, no problem. I'm quite surprised I'm coming in clear because I'm going through a few bridges um, for this to happen. A few data bridges. Did I hear you say you put the internet in that place? quite interesting. It? I just find it interesting. That technology can do this like all the way to... Whereabouts are you again? Oh, in Oregon. Crazy. We've lost um we've lost six. I'm back. I'm back. I was reading the comments. Sorry. I'm gonna get a photo of this. I'm, I'm gonna get a photo of this. Just one Sinta. second. Sinta. Yeah, my my beautiful little dog here is joining the party too. She's all excited. She hears the voices. So she's looking around, you know, because she can hear. The voices. This is exciting. This could be a, a one night wow. survival flight. Mm. <laughs> Here we go. You can do it. Nice. Go and do it. <laughs> no, he's um Owen the West of Ireland on a break with the wife. Yeah, I can I can hear a bit of sticks, but I can't see him. Owen. Yeah. Owen, you've got two dogs, right? I can see you too. Yeah. Yeah. Archie and Zara. They're now up with their mother upstairs. Can you not hear me? <laughs> yeah, we can hear you. Can you not see me yet? Yeah, we can see you too. Owen. Mm. Coffee is great. Um Oh it you know you're you know you're a, a camper when you go to a cottage and oh the fireplace you put two lights ready for emergencies. And then have two I thought, I've got a head torch and a and a torch sitting on top of the fireplace. Let me just show you. 
And this is real old school Ireland, is to have something of a light on the fireplace. You'd always have the car keys on the fireplace, um, or the head torch, the head torch. Because when the lights go out in Ireland, you know, the electricity would fail and you'd be obviously walking around your house blind, but you'd always find the fireplace. The sure. fire would be lit. Um, so that's why last night when I got here, it would be common enough in this part of Ireland for the electricity to just drop for no reason. And you go boom. And so the torches come out and get put onto the onto the fireplace. Yeah. Here, I'll leave you go back to your show. All I'll right. Leave you go back to your show. Very Dixon said. Well, I appreciate you joining. Thank you. Well, I forgot to test it. Thanks very much. I have a good day. Yeah, I'm excited about the Thank show. You know, I don't know what's going to happen here to leave. Yeah, I'm excited about it as well. I'm excited about just running the scenario of survival. I love it. It's a really good idea. And um, it's going to be nice to work with everyone. It's going to be nice. Have a good one, yes, guys. Indeed. I'll, I'll All go right. back to the show. All right. Bye. Right, I've got to make this one some breakfast. <laughs> breakfast, breakfast for some me. Brekkie. Some breakfast. Yeah, my breakfast. Or I have. Good morning. I have um, burritos in the morning. Who's that? Mm. <laughs> right, I'll get back into your life, sir. Yeah, so here you're seeing, let me make sure you can still see him. Yeah, so this is Chris from Sticks Outdoors. His channel is Sticks Outdoors on Bushcraft or on YouTube, great channel. And he had this idea where I was talking about it earlier to do a reality show basically on YouTube where he can, or that, he is a producer of the show and Mickey from Hampshire Outdoors and Owen from Life's a Hobby that you just saw join us. They can be, not that they can be, they, they'll, they're a production team, right? So he had this idea, put it out there to do a show with YouTube creators from around the world, right? And Owen had this idea. I don't know who had it first. It doesn't matter. They're working together as a team. And the show, again, will be brilliant because it's the power of the internet for us to, especially the technology. So I film everything on this. Everything that you've seen any of my videos for the last, what is it, 15 years? Well, you have it because that channel got deleted, but on my new channel, Hang Tough, I was able to rescue a few of those that are 15 years old. So everything shot and edited right here. No microphones, no lighting, nothing. I shoot it on this phone. I edit it on an iMovie. Now I'm using a new program called CapCut, which is insane. <laughs> Things that you only dreamt, that I dreamt of when I was little. And now it's all right here in the palm of my hand. So with this, obviously the entire world is open up and you see the news cycle now because everything that's happening in the world that's insane has always been happening, but now everyone's got one of these. So there's witnesses and there's documentation. Cut to the show. So I can go out and film my stuff. A guy in... Like I said, in Africa can film his stuff. A guy in Colorado, a guy in England, a guy in Iceland, doesn't matter. That footage can all be brought together, edited up, and then you've got your 30 minute show. So it's a great idea. And I'm excited because I'm gonna be in the first episode as a contestant. And again, I was saying the rules will be, they'll put out the rules and say, okay, 
episode one, here are the rules. You get a knife, a thing of dental floss, and an emergency space blanket. Whatever. And the scenario is that you've got to survive overnight wherever you're at. And that's where it gets interesting because where I'm at, the weather's going to be different than where contestant B is at or contestant C. And the environment may be different. Hostile environments, non, you know, non-permissive, everything. So there's a lot that can go into it versus on the standard TV show where it's, you know, even though you're splitting the contestants up, like on the loan, you know, you've got a contestant on this side of the island, this side of the island, this side. They're still in the general same thing, although the weather may be different. Or, you know, that's part of where you choose. Are you going to be on the coast? Are you going to be up? you know, in the trees, and your choices determine whether you survive that or not, right? Because anyone who's going to put themselves right on the rocks on the beach, because, well, it's less calories that it takes me to get to and fish, and, you know, my resources are here. Well, now you've got the weather, you're naked, right? That wind's coming in, the mist, the moisture, versus, you know, get yourself up in those trees, now you've got an umbrella. But then people say, well, now you're up in the trees and you've got deadfall, widow makers, critters. I mean, it goes on and on and on, right? Either way, it's exciting. So. That's weird. I couldn't see or hear sticks. Life's a hobby. Okay. Yeah, so from what I... The test I did with my friend is, yeah, because I've added to, so say I'm the mainstream in this one, and then I'm, I add the guests that have been invited, and I don't think you have to do anything. If I put, they call this the stage, you know, on computer programs, the stage is where you're working. And when I enable that person to the stage, it's live for the whole world to see. So I don't know. I'm sure we'll all figure it out. Play with this too. You too have it. And I'm excited for Mickey from Hampshire Outdoors to get it because for me, it's been a blessing. I love it to death. And what you saw there, that example of the three of us live streaming at the same exact time in 4K, at least on my end, it was seamless, perfect audio. We'll have to work out not like we're going to be doing this all the time, but it's fun to learn how it works. Um, just amazing technology, man. Amazing. And there's another company that is a com competitor of StreamYard that, we're, that I'm using now. And I'm also using the free version that guarantees 4K. That's how much power they have in their servers. So it's a ping-ponging, you know, like with walkie-talkies or on radio, you're pinging off responders. Okay, so if you're in, I'm in Oregon, and Chris is in England, well, we can communicate because we're bouncing the signal off of towers. Does that make sense? That's how communications work, basically. Right, so the satellite goes bing up here, and then it comes down here. That's how we're talking right now. Some point to that, I don't know what it was. Oh, so this company, I think they're called River. Something River. I'm getting a lot of advertising from them, but they take you, your stuff directly to their servers somehow. And once you're on, it's a guaranteed 4K lock being used by all the major companies, you know, film companies, business, River's Edge. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll research it more. I want to try it, but I believe there's fees involved so this is free oh here we go here's um mickey has joined the building good morning sir where have you your light but you're not because i don't expect anybody to join in on these but it's beautiful to see everyone you know i gotta check back real quick because my friend's on here Black Hole Retro is my friend from the Goodwill Bins. 
And I saw a comment come through. Let's see. I am a general, outdoor enthusiast, survival enthusiast, failed prepper. Okay, yeah. So I said, no, nah, bullshit. I'll take you up. Anyone that I take up within, I just take people up usually for two nights. Boom. You've got the foundation after two nights with me. I guarantee you that. You're definitely going to be able to make a fire, which is, you know, fire and shelter are what I can teach you, boom, right now. And you will never forget it for the rest of your life. Even if it's, you know, with this. Then you're going to learn, you know, how to make a fire lay. Pencil, lead, right? Pencil size, thumb size, all the basics. Just Boy Scouts 101. So, yeah, anytime you want to go, you tell me. It's one hour from where we're at. You wouldn't believe it. It's crazy. Okay, so let me catch up. So here's Mickey from Hampshire Outdoors. So he is the other producer of the show that we've been talking about. He'll have to watch back this live stream if he wants. But an update for Mickey is that I'm telling everyone about the idea for the show and that it's yourself sticks and life's a hobby for producing this idea and you heard me talk about the idea is it's a global survival show and then it can be put together great idea so this is mickey and i was telling everybody to check out your live stream on sundays hampshire outdoors and survival oh look who else is here the invisible camper so this is our friend, and he is in, damn it, why do I always forget this, Scotland, I believe. Great channel, The Invisible Camper. He does bushcraft, survival. He was military also, so he knows the shit. I believe he was military, right? Or was he something else? Anyway, and then he's into the history, so he takes you to a castle and then he's telling you this is da, 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 or you know ruins from world war ii this is a pillbox that was da, 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 da. great channel check him out i used to do multiple user live streams and stream yard on my bike channel the big tip is to turn up youtube feed volume off or you get massive feedback we had 10 users on hmm. okay yeah i have that on stream yard that i'm using now it's built in it just says turn on feedback protector. I've never played with it to see if it's affecting the sound because I'm only making the, the show. I, I'm not watching it, but when I, you know, live, but when I've watched it back, it's been no problem. The problem is what he's talking about here is that once you add other voices coming in, then you start getting that it goes into an echo chamber. You you know, so I'll play with it. We'll see. Mickey took coding last night. He needs coffee. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Mickey's been suffering from shingles. And shingles are a vicious, evil, horrible, horrible curse that the world or God or whatever you want to call it puts on you. Right? All of us get chicken pox. We should. Almost all humans, right? Well, shingles lives inside of the chicken pox and what happens is it stays dormant and 50 years later it comes alive some people don't get it i mean it's in everyone but some of us i have it it comes alive and it's a brutal rash just imagine any kind of a rash that you've had in your life but think of it more of as a third degree burn that's really what it is so it's a rash that comes up but it's burning at all times, like this, at all times, burning. And it gets on me in sensitive areas, right? The worst places it can get, you know, where, where you're bending here or imagine, you know, like here in that flap or think, you know, between your butt cheeks. So just anywhere it gets, I've had it on my back. It's fucking brutal. So 
he had a flare up of it. It's been horrible for him because it's already been shit. It, I know for sure it's been over a week, maybe more. And it can last for a long time. It's not funny, but so he got some codeine. Thank God. So he can get some sleep because you can't sleep with it when you've got it and it's burning. There is no comfort. There's no, you know, when you sleep, you know how it is. You go, oh, well, oh, no. And so you turn over and hit the pillow. You go, oh, no. And so you move it over here. Did you? Well, it's this type of thing, but the shingle shit, there is no comfort. You know, it should be given to enemies as a torture thing because it works. Cleared the shingles, just having car trouble, so it took 10 minutes to knock me out. So the shingles are cleared out, but he was having car troubles. So you might have been stressed out. I don't know. Invisible camper. I was in the military for a short time, then fire service 30 years. Okay. Fire service was the... Well, I, I was pretty sure military. And then fire service for 30 years, which is the military, right? Here are fire service. Any organization that's going to function with people in groups that need to do a task, it's military training. There's no difference. You've got to have a commander and a chain of command. That's all anything is. Right? But especially the Forest Service, I mean, you've got weapons, right? You've got, if it's Forest Service, you've got axes, chainsaws, and you use fire to make fire to stop fire. You know all that stuff. Anyway. And it's the same thing, military. It's you're here one minute, and you dig in, you're all set up, and everything's good, and we got to move, and now you're over here. And there's no sleeping, you know, there's a fire, it's an attack, it's a war. You don't just, you know, the fire's going, you don't go, well, time for bed, got to go to bed, <laughs> okay, no, you're up. This is where, I, where I'm from, and growing up my whole life, all my friends, lots of my friends and are firefighters up in the woods, not firefighters in the city but in the woods firefighters and you travel all over the world because we're one of the regions right oregon the pacific northwest so our guys go from oregon they go to texas or they go to mexico or they go overseas to brazil or they go you know they're used all over the world because my friends went on to become specialized so some of them jump out of helicopters and planes to go into dangerous they're called hot shots and they fight you know extremely brave and talented people but so it's exactly military they're using helicopters planes this walkie-talkie communications you know codes so it's 100 percent military I'm drinking triple strength coffee and smoking a cigar. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, you deserve it. Because it's been what? You can tell me in the comments, but it's been a two-week run. I'd say it's been at least two weeks that you've been suffering with it. Should mix some whiskey in there too. Avijar. How are you, Granny? Granny? No, that'd probably be me. Yes. Unless Avjivjar is someone's friend that's in here. I don't know. But welcome if you're here. First night's proper sleep in a fortnight. Oh, the sweet arms of Morpheus. Yes. That's great, man. Yeah, codeine. Ooh, good drug. I've always loved coding here. 
my whole childhood growing up, it was over the counter. You could get it. Right. Robitussin DM with codeine. You know, it'd say it right on it. Codeine, codeine. It's only been within the last, who knows? I don't even know. So I've, if I get it now, I have to get a prescription from the doctor. So you can't get it over the counter anymore. It used to just be the NyQuil or Robitussin. You had NyQuil, you know, had codeine. Everything changes. Half the shit. In the, go to a pharmacy now. Half the shit. You can't even get it because of all the drug use. You can make the drugs with these common ingredients. So any kind of the Sudafeds. You know, I'm, I would assume it's the same where you're living. Probably. Maybe not. But here now, everything's locked up. <laughs> Oh, look who's here. So this is my friend, a cowboy's hippie life. And I've got a great story about him, of something he just witnessed. Much love, brother. Namaste. So we're friends from the desert, living in our vans. You've seen videos on my channel talking about it. I've never done a live stream about that shit. But it's the ultimate freedom. You're in your van, car on foot, whatever. And the United States government has all this land. Hundreds of thousands of acres, millions of acres, actually. And it's all free to stay. And you can stay forever. I met people where I met Cowboys Hippie Life that were way out there. And they, the basic rule is, because there's no police or any kind of authority, when you go out far, but you can't go too far because you still need supplies. I got it down where once every two weeks I would have to come in for water because there's no water out there and food. And then, of course, liquor, cigarettes, that kind of stuff. But the I met people that told me that they'd been out there for 10 years. And the difference, what made it successful is that legally there's a, a time limit. And I don't even know if it's that you have to be there for 14 days and then move one mile. But where we were, where we were close, we were close to a town. But we could also get within one hour way out in the middle of fucking nowhere. And that's where I met these people that had been out there. And the trick was you got to keep it clean. You can't build these sprawling, you know, camps with trash you've got to take care of your trash and they have a system that you can go to these towns and they have a dump and it's all free now you got to remember these are people living in vehicles right rvs especially but people with money have the larger vehicles that have septic tanks so that's got to be dumped and then you've got garbage all you know everything creates waste well there it's free and you drive up, they're called refuse centers. And Cowboy's Hippie Life knows all about it. I guarantee you he goes and knows the people. Classic characters that work at these refuge centers. Great. I still think about the one guy. Anyway. And you come in and they go, over there. And you back your thing up or whatever. And you get out and you just go, do, dump all your shit. And it can literally be shit, you know. Whatever you're dumping, do, do, do. And what's killer is that where we were, it's a small little place that explodes. So say that it's, you know, 5,000 people. Well, once a year, it goes up to 100,000 people. And everyone's in campers. Now, a lot of these people have money. They've come from a long ways away, and they're in million-dollar rigs. Well, they try something out, and it doesn't work. A fridge, a microwave, whatever. And at these places, they go, what should we do with this? And he goes, oh, set it up over there. So you pull up to this place and there's a whole wall. Yeah, all the things that you wanted. There's the cooler. There's the heater. And it's just all sitting there. And you just take it. It's great. Man. So Cowboy's Hippie Life. He's out at Dome Rock tonight. Okay, so he's in Arizona right now. And the general region for most people that they'd understand is think Yuma, Arizona. That's general, but that's where we were in that zone. Okay. So we're talking, you know, 
right on the border, Mexico, California, Arizona, desert, beautiful, epic, and it's all free. So I learned everything. I know what I'll be doing when I do go back to it, because there's some certain things that now that I'm older, I learned that I need to be out there. But the big beautiful thing is that the solar is what I really learned about and ended up installing a bunch of it because it's all sun pretty much all the time. Not all the time. There's storms and shit. But most of the time. And you can run. It's all free. You have to boot, invest. But I actually started because people get rid of their old shit and get new stuff. Or I do a job and they go, hey, take this old power. And the prices have come down so much, but completely self-sufficient. So anyone watching this who's unhappy, living in an endless cycle of debt, you know, just surviving to live in a shithole, you know, what, what life is that? And that's who's out there. Because there's a man named Bob Wells who has a channel, Cheap RV Living. And he started making videos about, hey, Leave that bullshit. Come out here. It's fun. And you also, there's tribes, literal tribes. You know, so this is a channel about survival. You want survival, go out there. They're tribes, literally like motorcycle gangs, but they're, you know, 80 year old women. And they get together and they have their 10 RVs and they go out in the middle of the desert and they set up a tribe. Of, it's just kid. And this is right now. You can take you there tonight. And it's all free. I mean to stay, right? Camping, free, forever. And once you learn and, you know, but you'll see the people that learn have something to do. So a cowboy's hippie life is a gemologist. He's a rock scientist, basically. So he knows what the rocks are and he, you can pick them out there, literally hunt rocks. And then you can get them and clean them and sell them for big money. So he has a passion and a career. <laughs> and you'll see the older women that I did a lot of work for, the solar and just handyman stuff. They, you go in their rig and they've got beautiful Singer sewing machines, right? And they've got solar so they can power all their machines. And they just have a production company in their RV or their van. And they're just sewing making beautiful thing you make people that are painters that are painting you know because out there you get up real early so sun comes up six in the morning boom everybody's up and you have people that are building i saw all kinds of shit metal workers one time it wasn't great but these psychos came out <laughs> set up near me and they had welders and grinders and a giant old school buses and they were doing their artwork out there, making huge sculptures for Burning Man or vehicles or whatever. Whatever. It's crazy, man. But I'm going to tell a story about Cowboy's life, something he just witnessed. Aji Gala is smoking injurious to health, brother. Beautiful. Good weed. I like it a lot. I don't smoke weed, but just run up to British Columbia, Canada and pick up 222's best general painkiller. I have an over the counter in Canada. So, okay. I think he, this is my friend Black Hole Retro from the Goodwill. So, I believe those are in pretty much every other place in the world. There's little pharmacies that are, you know, it's someone's house, they live there. They've been the pharmacist for 100 years, their family. So in Spain, France, where I've been, Mexico, all over. And you can go to them and you can get many, almost everything we can't get here. Like you can just throw. And if you have to do anything, it's a simple, you know, go to the doctor and they look at you and go, yeah, you need um, Oxycontin. <laughs> it's, it's different. If you got money, you got it. Okay. So I think what he's talking about, they come, you know what Mentos are? You guys know Mentos? The fresh makeup. 
Well, they're in Mentos packs identical. And those are it's pure coating. Just awesome. Cheers, mate. First smoke in three months, and although I should not be enjoying it so f to see her for about a month, damn it, really fucks me up. I'm getting to the woods. So this is Mickey from Hampshire Outdoors, and he hasn't been smoking. But he, tonight he's having a cigar, so fuck it. You deserve a cigar, my friend, in my opinion. About a month. Really? Makes me up for getting to the woods and filming. I think he's talking about his shingles that he's had for a month that have offset his production or his filming. It's, you know, it's kind of hard to get up in the woods and film when you're in pain. I mean, imagine driving. When you drive with shingles and you're in a car. Oh, God. Because again, it's burning. And then you get there and you're going to now even more hardcore. You're going to have to sleep on a cot or in a hammock or a Brown. Hillary Clinton's here. Wow. The first lady, the former first lady of the United States is in the chat. She's probably lying about it though, right? <laughs> Love what you do. Well, thank you, Hillary Clinton. I can't say the same about you, but thank you for being here. Not you, but Hillary Clinton. But I appreciate you. That was a reference to the coding. Hillary Clinton had conjunctivitis. You'd have to go into detail. I don't remember what conjunctivitis is. Is that a political thing where you lie all the time? <laughs> Oh, pink eye. Ooh. I've seen people with pink eye. And it's, you know, it's horrible for them. And it's also a horrible thing when you see that person and that, that pink eye. And you go, oi, poor person, you know, because it's pink. It's just brutal. Congratulations on 225 viewers. Hmm. 225 viewers. I don't know. I've never had more than like, are you talking about this thing? On a live stream? Most viewers I've had are six, I believe. But I started a new YouTube channel. So it's my main channel is Hang Tough that you guys are watching on. And I've been telling people that it's a real good practice because it happened to me. I lost my channel. Okay. It's a long story. 10 years of my life, gone. Well, YouTube owns, it's their product. So if you violate their terms, you get the three X's, you're out, you're gone. And you can get all upset about it, but they're their terms. It's their thing. You're on it. You're the guest. You violate the terms, you're gone. And they take you everything away. You don't get it back. So recently, I was talking with some friends. It's, it's a great practice to, if you've got your channel, make another channel have two. Okay. Some of the bigger channels have multiple, even more, but at least have two. And then with your channels, you want to add authorized users to those in case your username or something, you get hacked. Very important. I'm going to do a little video on it. Okay, so I'm reading through the comments. So it looks like Hillary Clinton is on Instagram. And she came across my channel somehow. I don't know how. I appreciate it. And put a post up on Instagram. So I'm wondering who Hillary Clinton really is. It's It's got to be a friend, somebody I know. Maybe not. And posted it. 
And so when I refreshed it here, it says that there's 225 people watching the live stream right now. <laughs> That's killer. So I can see her friends because they're saying that, you know, I'll show you. Congrats on 225 views. And then here we've got Brookie, you're on my homepage. Crown Fire, I'm here from Hillary, Hillary's Instagram post. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming by. Hillary Clinton gang here. Hillary Clinton just posted you. Yeah, so I'll check out. I have an Instagram. I tried to use it. It's way too much work. Couldn't understand how it functioned. I don't use Instagram. I don't use any of the new things, right? So I've experimented with them, but to me, they're it's too much. YouTube, boom. But I have it set up. So I don't know. Maybe we were friends on there. But I'll have to, I don't even think I have the app anymore, but I'll have to get on there and find out how we're connected. But I appreciate you. It's always fun. Everyone's welcome to come. We basically just bullshit. The channel is about, if you're new here and you're watching this, I teach survival skills. I'm in Oregon, in the Portland area. I live in a van and I teach survival skills we call it bushcraft some things which are real primitive ways of getting fire made building shelters think caveman right and i'll take people up and teach them real basic boy scouts stuff again how to make a fire how to make a shelter how to go to the bathroom how to make you know spears real easy probably everyone to if you guys are all in the United States, you know, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, all that stuff. So that's what the channel is about. And then I just started the second channel that's just me, no editing. Meaning that I don't, I just shoot in the footage, put it up. So that's been fun. This is Mickey from Hampshire Outdoors and Survival. He's in England. He's south of London. And he is a instructor also of bushcraft, camping skills, survival skills. I just call it survival, prepping. So he's a, this is his, what he's into. And he has a live stream. If you guys want to head over on Sunday, this is his channel. Hampshire Outdoors and Survival. And it's on Sundays at 2000 UTC. So if you're on the West Coast, that's Sunday mornings at 12 noon, our time. So wherever you're at in the United States, if you guys are here in the United States, head over there. It's a blast. Real fun. It's he and his wife, Kaz, and she's the producer. You know, she's there. She's helping run the chat, feeding questions. Mickey's talking about what he's up to, new videos, new projects, which he'll be talking probably about the project that he and Owen and Styx have come up with, which is going to be a reality TV show. And it's going to be like global survival. So I'll be on the show. I'll be in Oregon shooting my episode. Well, there'll be someone in England shooting their episode, someone in Africa, someone in Ireland, someone in Australia, all say on the same day with the same rules. But that opens up a massive world of possibilities because what's my environment like? What's the weather like where I'm at? What's the weather like in Ireland? What's the weather like in Australia? Anyway, we're given, okay, this is what we're going to do. You get one tool, you get one piece of food, and your car just blew up. And 24 hours, you've got to make it. Show us what you do. And again, I shoot everything on this, an iPhone. Everybody, I think, shoots on little iPhones, or droids, whatever, in our show. And we'll film it. It'll be sent to Owen 
who's in Ireland, and he will edit it all together, and we'll make it into a pilot for a show. So it's very exciting. Yeah, I can tell there's definitely people here because the comments now. I'm on the free version here of, of StreamYard, which if anybody watching this, the 200 and what is it now? 218 people. This program, you should be able to see this logo right here. StreamYard. Beautiful program. Love it. It's free. It's revolutionized because I had this dream. I got inspired by Mickey from Hampshire Outdoors to do the live streams. Well, I started playing with it just with the YouTube and the interface was real janky and no control. The StreamYard, somebody turned me on to it. Brilliant. So if you don't have it, get it. It's right here, StreamYard. It's free. That's, I'm using the free version. And the, it's so basically laid out. I can change. You saw tonight earlier. You guys didn't see it because you just joined, but I had two guests on and boom, I can pop them right up. Just cool. I can show simply it's just if you can see the interface of this thing it's a little kid could do it you just click here click here show this screen show this i can show you know these comments which to me was very important because then i can control the pacing of the show by myself right because i can say okay i want to talk about this comment that hillary made Okay, so here's Hillary. You all see it, right? Hillary Clinton. That's amazing, Hampshire. I'm glad to hear that. So, if it was a point, you see what I'm saying? Then we can, okay, here's what we're talking about right now. Hillary says, that's great. Well, let's talk about, it. you know what I'm trying to say. Shackman, is that weed? <laughs> no. No, it's just... um. Pipes back there. So here in Oregon, I actually have it right here. I'll show you. This bag, you can see the size. They can sell this, you know, at the stores. Basically, you know, head shops is what we call them. And this whole thing, $7.99. Add these, the rolling papers. I smoked for the whole month for literally under $20. Now, again, smoking, you guys are new to the channel, but smoking is a horrible, horrible, disgusting habit. But my new video that I'm putting together, it's the um, top 50 stealthy homeless survival tips. I've been shooting it for over a month now. But I have a whole segment about using cigarettes as bartering tools and how powerful they are and how they can de-escalate situations and grant you access. If any of you smoke, you know that smokers live in a secret world. So the power of cigarettes. So no, it's not weed. I don't smoke weed. But I'm in Oregon, and weed is... I mean, it's all legal now, but it's never been a huge thing here, but now that it's legal, they're just trying to market the hell out of it. So I was talking in a video that it's in everything. And the weed stores are everywhere, on every corner. Now there's two on every corner, right? And they've got weed toothpaste, weed toilet paper, weed, anything you could put something in, there's weed in it. They've got weed Coca-Cola. They've got weed beef, whatever. Black Hole Retro. Good evening, Hillary. Can we discuss the Clinton Foundation, money laundering, and 97 friends of yours? <laughs> yeah. Classic, man. Don't forget, throw Benghazi in there. Let's talk about that. Yeah, I'll have to look this. I'll have to look you up, Hillary Clinton, on Instagram and see what. I don't know. If you're, if it's, you know, like a joke, Hillary Clinton thing. I don't know if you like Hillary Clinton, don't like Hillary Clinton. I don't know.
Sorry, but I don't discuss my past. What's behind me is done. I only took towards the future. I missed that whole conversation. I don't know. Life's a hobby's back. This is Owen, who is one of the producers of the show. And I say producers because that's my world. I worked in LA for 20 years. So that's the name that we give the creative of the show. So Mickey's a producer, Owen's a producer, Chris is a producer. It's just the names that I give. But it's really the the artist behind the show, the, you know, the creative. So he's on, Owen is on vacation right now with his wife and dog in Western Ireland. And he said, it's wet and miserable. He was on earlier making coffee. Hardest part of ops is not smoking. Yeah, he's probably talking about being out somewhere on a military operation. You know, you can't have that cigarette smoke. You know, just think about it. It's a smoke signal, literally. So, you know, if you're sitting here and puffing away and cigarette smoke is going through the air, well, you can see it. But more than anything, you could smell it. So you got a problem. That's why you'll steal the military or any kind of special operations or security operations, whatever whatever it is, it's going to be tobacco, right? Chewing tobacco, chewing tobacco. And then even that gets complex because it can't, it's the smell also. So if it's a mint, spearmint, you know, all the t chewing, we call it chew, has those smells that can be dangerous because now that smell still is traveling. And if you're dumping it, you know, that's evidence. It all gets complex. Most everyone I know, yeah, choose. Choose or some sort of a, you know, the new gum stuff, just to get that nicotine fix. The way we look at cocaine and Coca-Cola is how we look back at weed and everything. That's right. Yeah, so your <clears throat> sticks is in England. I don't know what's going on. I have no idea what the marijuana laws are like in England. But here in Oregon, we were, I think, the second in the United States. Plus, it's always been a super hippie, very, you know, the Grateful Dead are one of their, their big home bases here out of Oregon. Marijuana, drugs, dreams, hippie, Oregon, big time, going way back. But when these stores came in, I mean, and now, it's nothing. I mean... It's as normal as oh, I hit the tip. It's as normal as you going to the pub and getting a beer. It means nothing. Everywhere you go, it's marijuana, smoke, smoke. You know. And you can go to the store and go in and it's dirt cheap and it's super potent. Radically stronger than what things used to be. They have dab hits, you know, which is a crystallized. You smoke like a crack smoker. Inhale the smoke with a you know little tube. It'll take you out of this world. The edibles they have, you'll take one. And I know many people who just didn't realize how strong it's going to be. We need to get one from Mickey right now, actually, because they're incredible. You take one, boom, out. 48 hours, just beautiful stuff. Oh, so look, my little thing just refreshed. This is crazy. Okay, so when Hillary Clinton, that's gonna be the title for this too, it'd be great. So I don't know who, who the person that, the avatar and everything was Hillary Clinton from the hundred or from the comments that I saw. It's someone on Instagram. And I don't know who it is. I don't know if I know them or what, but it was fun. But 
from what I could gather from the comments in Instagram, this person who goes by the little icon Hillary Clinton said, go check out this guy hangs up my channel and posted my link. So she's got to have a pretty big following because I don't know where she is in the world or he or whoever it is, but whoever is the Hillary Clinton person on Instagram to get 225 people that quickly. Where, what time is it? I mean, who would be up? It's a Friday night. I don't know. Oh, maybe they're gamers, video gamers. Because to push 225 people into a live chat is, that's a big reach, right? Because obviously to get 225 to go, you've got to have a much larger audience, right? Pretty cool. But what's funny is myself and some other people said, basically that we don't like Hillary Clinton, the real Hillary Clinton and things that have happened during her administration, her dealings and whatever. And so I said that and my friend, I don't remember, what is his screen name? Hold on one second, Black Hole Retro. He also said, you know, here was his comment. And we discussed the Clinton Foundation, money laundering, 97 friends of yours and bills. And I said, yeah, what about Benghazi? Let's talk about that, that fucking shit show. And there's a million other things. And as I watched, they all started going away, going away, going away. And then all of a sudden, boom, all of them gone. So. If I offended you, Hillary Clinton, I'm not sorry. Because they may be, you know, big Hillary Clinton fans. I don't know. And you can see how that would go. If it was, if that person whose name is the Hillary Clinton thing said, go check out this guy. Boom. Then we all, they all get here. And then I go, I don't like Hillary Clinton. And then they go, everyone leave. <laughs> Too funny. We'll find out. Invisible capper. The whole gun drugs thing kind of passed me by. I guess that I have a life in uniform. Yeah. Well. The wild thing about drugs in the military is that in my life, I never realized until I got a little bit older that the drugs were rampant. And it, as I got into more older and older and new people who were in the military or new people that worked the security, blah, 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 on bases, and the bases were huge problems because the bases have MPs or their own military police. And the crazy shit they should just do a reality show just of bases military bases because it's its own little world and the drug use is through the roof i'm talking now modern times not in this campus times because back then they're still honor and you know what's happened in the modern military is when you drop the standards that you know you can have this long of a criminal record you could have been in jail this many times and you don't have to graduate high school and you know, all that bullshit. Well, that's who you're drawing in. Well, what do you think's gonna happen? Heading to the beach soon. It's been a tough year so far and I've needed to break badly. Well, good for you. Going to the beach is a massive spiritual. Right. Very important. You know, if you're if your being isn't calm and happy or you know what I'm saying. Everyone here is older, you understand. It can't be stressful because it 
as you get older, that leads to health problems, really, right? The stress, it's heart attacks, strokes. It's so it's just got to be calm. So anything you can do to get that relief is extremely important. I only came across drugs when I went into private sector security or private sector. It never interests me that much. I'm definitely not. I'm daft enough without making myself worse. <laughs> me too. So you saw in that little thing, people said, is that marijuana? You know, I get that all the time because it looks, and it's the same exact thing as the joint. But, yeah, no marijuana. I mean, I vividly remember the time. I think it was the only time when I was 16 or something, and here, smoke it, you know, and I, and it hit me, and then it turned out the guy that, he was older, so it was at a college house, and it somehow somebody knew him, and he had the weed, so we're there smoking the weed, you know, and it turned out he was a psychopath, so he, all of these little kids, basically 16-year-old high school kids, are smoking weed for the first time, and you know, he, well, then he comes around the corner with a you know, Freddy Krueger mask and a machete and goes, ah! and starts chasing people. You know, he was a psychopath. Fucking psycho. And that's what happened. He chased us. And, you know, so then you're wigging out. What's going on? Anyway, that's it. Never smoked weed. And it wasn't because of that. I just wasn't my thing. I apologize. I shouldn't have gone political. Chat. Oh, don't worry about it. Man. I say whatever I think. So it doesn't have anything to do with you. I, I was talking about when I first saw him, it pop up on the screen. But no issue. All right, life's so happy. Adios, sun just came out. Beautiful. Have fun. And we'll be talking soon. Because I want to get some more clarity on the breakdown for the show. Wasn't much drugs when I was in the military. That was in the 80s. Yeah. Here in our military, the drugs really started. I mean, it, I've researched and got shows on it. There's always been drugs and alcohol and whatnot. The heavy trade came I want to say Korea, the Korean War. But where it really went off was Vietnam. You know, and so that's when it just went insane because it was the transport. They were using the military, you know, planes and so it was all now you had a network. You could move those drugs. But I believe in the thing, the documentary, I think they said that it really got, you know, you've got your trade routes for drugs. So I'm thinking it was Korea is where that started. So it would have been 1950s. And then so many people, it was so different then that the doctors, you know, prescribed the drugs to you. So if you look at any celebrities like Elvis, well, those weren't, he wasn't a drug addict. There was no drug abuse because those were prescribed by the doctor. And that's how it used to be. You know, here, take this in the morning. I'm not, oh, I can't sleep. Take this at night. And then those are barbiturates, you know. <laughs> it's, they're just drugs, but they're given to you by the doctor. And then soldiers that were injured that were given morphine and more morphine. Well, that's heroin. So a lot of people had, it wasn't anyone's fault. I was trying to find your channel, Black Hole. 
I don't know if he has a channel. Oh, okay. He doesn't have a channel. Yeah, so Black Hole, all these people are my friends here. So you definitely subscribe to all their channels. They've all got great content. And I believe you can do it. Yeah, you can do it through the chat. Because what I see is just the comments, but I believe I tested it once. And the, the people in the thing said, yeah, we can see it. Click on their name, and I think it takes you to the channel. All right, cool. Yeah, and definitely, since we're together, you know, you can come down to where we go, the Goodwill. And uh, we could set up anytime you want to go up. I mean, it's got to work for our schedules and everything, but I can take you up. And definitely within 48 hours, have the basics down for you. Yeah, Black Hole Alter. Sundays. So it's Sunday morning for us, 12 noon. That's when Mickey here, Andrew Outdoors, does the live stream. So join us. You'll see me watching it because I'll be at the bins and I'll have it here and I have my head earpiece in and I'm watching and I'm in the thing. Well, I'm going to wrap it up by telling the story that this all started with that sticks that he's been waiting to hear for uh, hours. Take care, everyone. Well, he's not going to hear it right now. He's going to find some treasures. Anyway, I'm going to make it real short because I put up a video. It's on my new channel. I wonder if I can put it in here. I'm going to post it. Let's see. So it'd be youtube.com, I think, forward slash. And I don't know. Actually, I should probably check that out. I don't know. Let me just put it up. And then you guys click that and tell me if it takes you to my new channel. This is my new channel where it's just everything goes and I don't edit any of the footage. I just shoot it with, with the phone and then put it all together and hit upload and it goes up. Joe Bonadonna. Joe Bonadonna. That's a great name. Joe Bonadonna. I don't know who Joe Bonadonna is, but thank you for being here. Joe Bonadonna, are you from Hillary Clinton? You might be able to shed some light. Hmm. Okay, link broken. All right, watch this. Now, you should still be able to see me. But I'm in the background here. Doing something. Let's see. Okay. So let's see if I can put this link. Can you guys see me? I think you can. Yeah, you should be able to. Okay, so here's the link. We are a collection of hoppers, jokers, and rogues. I like that. Ajgar says, I'm 17, any advice? Well, if you're 17, I don't know where you're at in the world, but pretty late. I'd say go to bed.
All right, Ajavarios, out of the chat. Joe Bonadonna. Joe Bonadonna. Joe Bonadonna. Just a great name. I mean, that's a that's a rock star celebrity name. That's your real name. Bonadonna, that's Bonadonna. It's gotta be Italian. 355 a.m. here. Okay. So it's 155 a.m. here in Portland, Oregon. Okay, so that link that I put in there works. That's my new channel, where it's just a free-for-all. Because Hang Tough channel that you're seeing here is going to be moving in a very certain direction that's survival-based. It's just a choice I've made where, okay, I'm running in this direction. But I still have all the fun stuff. You know, me, my life, all this stuff. And when you're trying to go a certain direction, you can't. it can't be too. No. I mean, it can be if you're already huge, you can have playlists, but once I get, you know, on a schedule, basically, I'm going to be releasing one video a week because the new stuff I'm doing is going to take six days to produce. So once a week, a video goes up. Well, when you've got an audience that's waiting for that once a week, and then it comes and I put up a chat, you know, once a week and here it comes and it's me playing with my dog doesn't work that's a big letdown because you're excited the new gym you know, that's how i am i love junkyard digs they prepare and fix old cars and i'm waiting all week every sunday that he releases they release their video it's one hour video and i'm all excited and they don't do any advertising just boom it's there on sundays and so if i waited all week and then boom it's there on sundays and he's teaching a class on financial responsibility we'd go what it's confusing. It's not what I want. So I started the second channel, and I throw up all the B-roll. My advice to a 17-year-old, have fun, don't worry. It all comes to a good end. It's true. Joe Bonadonna, it's my real name. Great name. I mean, that's, like I was saying, celebrity, but that's a mega rock star name. All right, so the last thing I'm going to tell, so that way it's complete when this video is watched in the future. My iPhone was stolen. Okay, I was having coffee in the morning. I've got, the, it's, here it is, it's back. But I'm having coffee in the morning. I smoke, I'm on this phone to set the phone down outside in front of the house on a patio i come inside the house i get my lunch bag i get my backpack i feed the dog and i go to leave and i see my phone on the charger and I go, oh, I thought I had it. so i grab the phone i put it in my pocket i go outside i lock the door i go i get on the train i'm on the train pull my phone out of my pocket well it's not this is phone number one. I have two phones. The phone I pull out of my pocket is phone number two. So phone number one has been left at home. I go, oh. But I go, okay, I'll just get it tonight. No big deal. Eight hours later, I come back home. I come in, I start looking for phone number one everywhere. It's not there, it's not there, it's not there. What the, Jesus. So, I enable find my iPhone and it thanks for a little bit and it pings it and it's 25 miles away from where I'm at right now, from where it was left. And I go, Jesus. Now again, it's this phone, phone number one. And this, this phone's been through this three times before, but I always get my phone back because of the technology. So from learning in the past, I know that one time I did the thing where you enable the message and it pops up on the screen. So the person that has it, it says, you know, the police have been notified, turn this in right away or you're in trouble. But I did that once and they took the phone and they threw it 
in the back of a car, a random truck or something. And it moved around for three days all over Los Angeles. And I had to get it back from 100, 200 miles away. It's a nightmare. So I don't want to do that. So what I did is I called the police to make a report for the insurance that this phone was missing. I'm on the phone with the police and they say, where's it at? And I go, oh, and I tell them the address. And they go, okay, we'll send, send a sheriff over there. <laughs> and I go, you've got time to send a sheriff over for my phone? And they go, yeah, because it's in a little town 25 miles away from me. Real little. You're gonna, if you watch that video, you'll see it's an old, old farming town. And I go, wow. So they send the sheriff. He calls me. He, I think, was sitting in front of the house. And he said, well, hmm. I hate that when they do that. You can't get a drip pull on them. Basically, he goes, well, the house is not a house. It's an apartment complex. He said, this is my neighborhood that I patrol. He said, it's a nice place, hardworking people. I don't think anyone here would have stolen your phone. I think there's more to the story, but I can't because it's pinging just to the address. But at that address, there's eight different apartments. Well, he can't legally just walk up and start knocking on doors. He needs a solid address. If not, he has to get a warrant. Plus, I don't know. He doesn't know if this thing was stolen, what happened to it. So I go, yeah, yeah, no, no, don't do anything. So I say, you know what? Let me call. I call. The guy answers the phone. Boom. Hello. And I go, hey, you're on my phone. And he goes, yes, because I've been wondering what I should do. He doesn't speak English. He's speaking Spanish. I speak Spanish. He goes, I didn't know what to do because I've got this phone. I found it in the street, but I can't get in it, right? You can't get in with your thumb, with your fingerprint. So I've just got this phone. I can't see the note. You know, and he's right. What do you do? There's nothing you can do. So I said, cool. I said, Don't. you know, and right away, he's, I mean, just the fact he answered the phone. Okay, there's a good sign. He's... You know, he's got it. It's working. It's got a full battery. And his tone is calm. So, you know, there's nothing weird going on yet. And I said, where'd you find it? He tells me he found it, which would have been a mile away from the houses. And he says he was you know, working and he found it in some bushes or something. So right away I go, okay, well, I know it was on the front of in the porch. I think someone came up, snooping around, whatever, saw it, took it. But did that person have it and then couldn't get in, whatever, you know, and tossed it? Here comes this guy. He finds it. He's got it. So I say, okay, I just need my phone back. He goes, yeah, no problem. He goes, call me tomorrow, which is you know, now today. At this time, excuse me, and I will get you. You'll get. I'll get, bring you your phone. I go, thank you. And I don't even, you know, the phone means nothing, right? It's a thing. But are all the pictures backed up? All the videos? All the voice recordings? No. So it's very valuable to me. So the day passes. I do my thing. I call at the time he tells me to call. And instantly the tone's different. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I tell him that I have his exact address. You know, I can come there. And he's shocked because he doesn't understand these, you know, the tracking that I can see is exact where he is. And a lot of times they're off, but this one's dead on because I read him the address and he goes, Oh my God, you know, you can't believe it. And then it starts changing that. He didn't go to work today, and he was in the town yesterday, but he was there exercising with a friend, so he wasn't working, like he told me before. 
and now he found it somewhere else. So right away, the story starts coming apart. Then I say, okay, look, the police, I talked to them. They said, you probably are a great guy. You just found it. You want to do the right thing. Um, I, I told them, I want to work this out with you. Where do you want it? What do you want to do? Then it comes out that he says, well, I'm quite a ways away. Um, I need gas money to come bring it to you. And I go, well, he is from where I was. He's like, you know, three miles away. And I go, well, I've got $5 on me cash. You know, the gallon of gas here is $4. And I go, I can give you five bucks, you know, plus it's his time. Because the whole time, unless you know someone's guilty, you can't. He may be this guy that just found it on the street, and he's a nice guy and trying to do the right thing. So he has no obligation to get in his car and drive it to me, and you know, it's bullshit. But then in the background, someone's yelling, blah, 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 and then he says, no, I need $20. $20, and I'll bring it to you. So I'm looking at the map, and I go, $20? Yeah, for gas. And I go, are you driving like a fucking jet engine truck or what? You need to come three miles and you need 20 bucks. It's not possible, right? Thinking of the gas that he'd need to buy to come do this. And I go, no, man. I go, I'm not giving you 20 bucks. So I go, you know what? And plus the conversation now, the stories have changed. It's getting a little strange. And his energy is changing. He's speaking rapidly. You know, if you've worked security in these kinds of fields, you know it's all about sensing. So I go, okay, if I just come to your door, because I know where you live, and come there, can I just have the phone, just leave it outside, whatever? And he goes, yeah, okay. So I start filming the video. I go there. I call. I say, I'm out in front. He opens the door. Very nice man. Gives me the phone. I can feel the, the vibes. It's a nice place. You know, blah, blah, blah. And I go, hey, I go here, you know. 20 bucks, it's a finder's fee, I appreciate it. No, 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 he doesn't want to take it. And he's looking, you know, like, where's the police? And I go, no, it's just you and me, I appreciate you. Thank you, this means a lot to me. $20, please take it. And so he reluctantly, he was, oh, okay. And I go, thank you for watching my phone. All right, bye, and he, bye, and I left. And that's the whole story. So the whole story is I don't know the whole story, but it doesn't really matter, right? When you get into these kind of things, what matters is this, the phone. I've got the phone. So that's the whole story. And, you know, if you think about monetary value, because I'm, I'm erring on the side that he was just not part of this. He didn't actually steal it. I think somebody did. Obviously, somebody stole it. Somebody took it off the front porch. I think they got frustrated and then got scared. And I bet it started beeping. You know, messages are coming in and they toss it. Or they couldn't get into it. And, they, and I think he found it. So a little reward, you know, 20 bucks, still be worth it. One time to get this exact same phone back, I paid two hundred dollars because it was stolen from an event that I was at, and it took two days. And a crackhead on the street said, "Oh, you lost that phone? Yeah, I think um, Jumble Mouth has it." And I said, "You know Jumble Mouth?" And he goes, "Yeah, man, he's underneath the Morrison Bridge. I'll get it back for you." And I said. Because at that time it was new and i said i'll tell you what i go and it was him and his buddy so it was you know his name was like little chirp or something and the other guy's name was rascal literally no teeth you know they ride around on bmx bikes they're meth heads and smash out windows and steal shit i probably <laughs> anyway it's a long story but i go i'll give you a hundred dollars and you a hundred dollars because it had video on it that i needed for the old channel, a whole camping trip I just done. It's a nightmare, right? It's gone. And I go, the 
massive, you know, I wasn't done with the video and it's on that phone, this phone. So I go, I give you $100 and you $100. Get my phone back. Meet me here tomorrow night. And so they came back the next night, both of them, real scared. Hey. And I go, hey, did you get my phone? I'm still trying to find it, man. He went up to um, Yakima. And, but apparently he gave it to um, Jiggles over at, you know, wherever. Go, okay. We'll come back tomorrow. They go, same time tomorrow. Okay. Sure enough, same time tomorrow, they sent a girl, you know, because they're scared. They think it's a sting or something. And they didn't take the phone, but they're going to get it back from me. Well, they live on the streets and they're street smart. They don't want to get caught up in some bullshit. So the girl comes to where I'm working and says, um, I'm looking for someone who is expecting something. And I go, that's me. Okay. Um, well, can you go outside? You know, somebody go outside. And they're hiding on their BMX bicycles in the shadows. They're across the street. And I go here. And so I give her the money. I give her the $200. And she can't believe she was. And I go, just take, go give it to him. And I go, I'm right here. And she goes over in the, in the shadow room. And I'm watching them if they're going to bolt. Do they have the phone? And here comes the kid on the bike. He comes up and he goes, here, man. And he gives me the phone. I swipe it. It's mine. I go, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. And he goes, sweet. That's it. And I go, that's it, brother. That's a hundred bucks for you and a hundred bucks for however you guys want to split it up. And he goes, Holy oh, shit, man. Fuck. And he's hugging me. Oh, dear. He, they can't believe because they're homeless, you know, and they're drug addicts. And they got on their bikes screaming, laughing. Rah, 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 and took off. That's my story. Yeah. Well, I got to wrap this up because it's late. I think I'm still streaming. Is it? Look at me. I probably, can you imagine? I'll just keep talking and talking and talking. The thing's been off, but it says it's still ticking. So what I do is the trick that I learned from Mickey from After Outdoors is I leave it on. I let the stream continue for five more minutes about whatever. That way in the chat, everyone who's in here so Joe, Hampshire Outdoors, Black Hole, Invisible Camper, Owen, Sticks, everyone who's in can talk amongst themselves and say, good night. Hey, I'll check your channel out. Thank you, blah, blah, blah. And that's what I do. And then in a couple of minutes, I'll say good night and end. Thanks, Mickey. I learned that from you. It's great. Everyone should do that. You should patent that. And the last thing I'll say before I start the five minutes is we'll see the, the live stream I'm supposed to be for me every Saturday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. I just have so many things going on and I'm editing. I'm doing massive production in background. I saw getting all the assets for the new direction of the channel, which is all video stuff, and learning new stuff, programs. It'll be a surprise of what I'm doing. Mickey knows what it is. But it's a whole, it's basically it's a show that I'm creating for me and myself as the character in the show on the channel. So it's been hours and hours and hours of research and getting the assets, learning how to use them. A lot goes into what I'm to what we do. Anyone's creator on here can tell you that it's a lot of work. You know, this video I've been doing right now, the clips I'm producing, they're 30 seconds. Each one takes 24 hours minimum to create the 30 seconds. So I've got to get all the stuff. I've got to go travel. I've got to shoot it. It takes hours. I've got to come back. I've got to put all the footage out. Got to edit rough through it, and then I've got to get the audio, 
do the voiceover, and I've got to make all that work in 30 seconds. So anyone who's not a creator, make something. And you will see how much effort and time and why 99.9% .9 of YouTubers don't make it. Because it's just too much. Too much work. Or no reward, basically. What I do need to do for this five minute thing is have some, I'll find some music that I can play that's copyright free. So it can play. Do, 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 do. All right. I see everyone said good night. So thank you to Black Hole, Phil Bonadonna. Love that name. Mickey, Owen, Chris, anyone else? Invisible Capital. And uh, check out that video. You'll probably dig it. Some beautiful backgrounds and a nice rainbow. Ciao.